Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Legendary Leaders. I am your host, Katrina Jamison. I'm the founder of Legend Leaders, where we arm female business leaders with the strategies they need to live a legendary life on their terms. It is the month of February. We are kicking off a new topic. And this is something I've been pondering lately. I've really been thinking through why amazing, talented, capable women feel trapped in their careers. It's been something that I've been asking my clients, my friends, reflecting back on my life because I know that I had felt that way whenever I worked in the corporate world. It's a big topic. It's a topic that is really plaguing us right now. I know that we have the great resignation happening and we have millions of people exiting the workforce. You know, last year alone, there were so many small businesses that were started that it exceeded the number of small businesses opened in the previous 13 years. So we have a large number of individuals, as you already know, as you're well aware, they're leaving the corporate world, they're leaving corporate America, and they're starting their own businesses. At the same time, though, we have super talented, phenomenal women that are staying in their roles. And sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it's because they're getting all this, all this benefit, right? And they feel fulfilled and they're giving and they're contributing. And so it's meeting all of their personal needs and they're being able to serve. And I love that. That's exactly the perfect situation. That's the situation we want to find ourselves in. All of us, whether it's in our own businesses, whether it's in the corporate world, it doesn't matter where, as long as we have it. The opportunity though is that a large number of women are staying in their roles in the corporate world, not because they're getting fulfilled, not because they're contributing and they love it, but because they feel trapped. And the questions that I've been asking are things like, well, why are we trapped as women? Are we trapping ourselves? Is it, is it something that we're telling ourselves? Is it something that's happening to us? What is it? And so I've been having lots of conversations. I've been writing some blog articles. If you like to read, go to legendleaders.com and click on the blog and check out some of the ideas and concepts that I've developed there. But if you're not a reader, no worries, because we're going to spend this month, and I'm going to pick a Wednesday every month, every week, right, for this month. So four Wednesdays here in the month of February. And we're going to go through what I believe are the four common, most common reasons that women stay trapped and feel trapped in their corporate career, in their corporate positions that they hold currently. And so that's what we're going to do. And I think that it will be eye-opening because either you're going through it now and you may be experiencing one of the four, you may be experiencing bits and pieces of all four. You may not be in the corporate world anymore, but you did experience it sort of like I did, right? I experienced some of these and, and got myself out of it. And so no matter where you are in the journey, I think that each of us can identify with this because either we have experienced it, we are experiencing it, or there is a likelihood that we could experience it in the future. And if that's the case, I absolutely want to arm you with that knowledge so that you can move forward and break free. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into the very first concept that I believe keeps us as female, amazing female business leaders trapped in the corporate world. And what I would call is a misplaced loyalty. That's what I'm going to call this first one is a misplaced loyalty. You know, many times you will talk to friends, you will talk to uh, peers, you're having conversations and someone will say something to the effect of, eh, it's okay, right? It could be better. And you say, well, well, why are you still there? You're amazing, right? Or they ask you, why are you, why are you still there? You're absolutely amazing. You, you could work anywhere. And the answer back is, well, you know, they've given me so many opportunities. They've given me so many chances. And so I just, I owe them. I owe them because they've given me so many opportunities. Now, isn't that an interesting answer? On the surface, it sounds amazing, right? If you don't really think about it, if you don't digest it, then it sounds very appropriate. Oh, wow, this person is very admirable. I, I respect them. They look at a situation and if someone has done something amazing for them, they stick in there and, and they give right back. I admire that. 
And that's really what we, if we're, we're telling people that, that's really what we hope that they will feel. But the reality of it is that that's just our excuse. And I'm going to call that what it is. That's an excuse coming from fear. Now, why did we create this excuse in the first place? Well, I'm going to challenge you that the reason is because we're afraid to step out because we think that we're not enough. And because we think we're not enough, there's no one else that's going to want us. And that's the root cause of that one reason that we feel trapped and we can't leave the company or the position. Now, let's dive into that a little bit further. So when you think about that answer, they've given me so many chances. I just, I got to stay here with them. I so appreciate all the opportunities they've given me. Well, well, let's think about that for a second. Have you been promoted? No doubt. The answer is yes. You've probably been promoted in that organization multiple times. But the reality of it is that you deserved those promotions. You earned those promotions. When you look around you and you see other people being promoted or you provide promotions to other people, is it not without merit? Why would you be the only one that's not deserving of the promotion? Now, you've probably read many articles and there's lots of data out there with studies to show that women typically will not apply for a role or feel qualified for a role until we meet 100% of the qualifications. And that could be a big deal. That could be the reason. We're thinking, oh, well, there are 10 qualifiers that make me most qualified for the job. I really have only mastered five of them. And then you get promoted into that role. And you're like, oh, but I haven't mastered the other five. Wow, they've given me this amazing opportunity. Have they really? Think about it. Do you owe them for that? Or is that just not what life is about? You don't have to have 100% of the qualifications. You don't have to have it all figured out. No one does. We never do. And the people that you promote and the people that get promoted beside you or above you, no one has 100%. The point and the reason why we get promoted is that we bring the most important skill sets with us. And then they know, they being the leaders, right, whomever, C-suite, whomever it is, depending upon your level, they know that you have the capacity to continue to grow. Now, you went to college, no doubt, and when you went to college, you paid that university to help you grow and learn and develop, right? You paid them to give you that opportunity and, and to help you move through that part of your life. Then you came and you, you applied and you were accepted into this new culture, which is your career, your corporation that you work for. Now, when you applied, you were probably thinking, oh my gosh, they gave me this amazing chance. I am so grateful. They took a risk on me. But did they really? Are there not very rigorous interview processes that happen out there in the world, especially in the corporate world, where you have to go through multiple interviews and panel interviews and talk to multiple people? That's usually how it happens these days. You had a resume that showed your qualifications. You worked your butt off in school and, and you participated in all of these different things as your passion, but that also helped you get experience to come in and be an amazing, amazing leader and amazing candidate to fill the role. So I don't think that they took a risk on you. I think that they obviously did their work and selected the best candidate, just like you do if you hire people. So I want you to go through this mindset. When we start off in an organization and we feel like we're not qualified, the first thing we do is we tell ourselves, wow, they took a risk on us. I owe them. It's number one. And then if we get promoted before we feel like we're ready 100%, then we continue to feel like we still owe that organization. I call that misplaced loyalty. I absolutely believe that we should be loyal to organizations that have a great culture and that we fit as far as our inner culture, right? the things that, that drive us, our core, our core values and beliefs. When those align with the organization, we're aligned and we can be loyal to that mission. But if we're not being treated fairly, if we're not being treated respectfully or responsibly, if we're constantly made to feel not enough, then that's a problem. So I want to challenge you right now. If you have that answer, right, you're looking around you and you're seeing other amazing people start their own business or go to a new company or 
just push back, really step into who they are and challenge the organization that you're in to deliver more back to them. If you're seeing that happen and you want that, but you haven't stepped into that, I want you to ask yourself, why? Why haven't you done that? Is it because you believe that the organization that you're in has taken a chance on you? That you were a very risky hire? That you were a risky promotion? Because I'm going to challenge you to realize this. You are not a risk. You have amazing gifts and talents. And you are an asset. I would even wager many of you are an irreplaceable asset. And so it's time to stop trapping ourselves because of the mental stories we tell ourselves that hold us in place in our corporate roles. People are treating you respectfully and you're happy in your role. I love it. Enjoy it. Get fulfillment out of it. Give. Be amazing. But if there are pieces that are lacking, I want you to continue to listen to the episodes this month. I want to challenge you to look within yourself and say, what makes me feel trapped here? Is it something that's happening externally? Or is it something that I'm telling myself? Is it a story that I'm telling myself that I need to understand and acknowledge and stop telling myself? Because then I can actually choose. Do I want to stay or do I want to move on to a different organization? You just need to have the choice. And right now, a lot of us aren't giving ourselves a choice. So that's your challenge for today. Are you giving yourself a choice? And if not, why? And are you telling yourself, this company's giving me so much, I just can't leave them. They took a risk. They took a chance on me when I was just a kid. I really want you to step back and look at the story that you're telling yourself there. I really want you to ask yourself, have you truly been a risk or have you been an amazing asset? Change that story. I look forward to talking to you next week. We're going to talk about another reason, another thing that we tell ourselves as women that may have us trapped in our careers. Until then, and as always, go and be legendary.